Hey, God bless you wherever you are under the sound of my voice. Um, I want you to know that this is the day the Lord has made and uh, we're going to rejoice and be glad in it. What a wonderful day, what a beautiful day God has given unto us. Beloved, if you are still breathing, I want you to know that God has been faithful to you and that you have every reason to give him thanks. All right, just give him thanks. Shall we just open our mouth and just thank him for how far he's brought us as um, um, we've just entered a new month, a new month and a new day, a new month, a new day, and it is glorious. Hallelujah. Amen, somebody. Come on. Just thank him for his faithfulness, for his goodness, and for his mercy. In the name of Jesus, let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we are thanking you this morning for giving us such a wonderful day. This is the day, Lord, you have made. We are grateful to you for sparing our lives and giving us another month to live, putting us in the place among the living. This is a divine selection, selecting us among the living and not the dead, that we may lift up our voice and say thank you. So we are thanking you. Many thanks for what you did for us and seeing us through the month of July and, to, and, and bringing us into the month of August. We are grateful. We are grateful. We trust you that you will see us through this month of August as well and, re, and unleash all that blessings that the month of August has come with. We receive it in the mighty name of Jesus. We are grateful to you. Thank you so, so very much. Thank you so much for who you are and for what you are and for what you are doing in the life of us all. We are grateful to you. We are grateful to you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Beloved, if you are, if you know that you are alive and well and you can um, just feel, touch and smell, just pinch yourself and make sure you are alive. You are among the living. All right? Make sure you are among the living and not the dead. And then when you feel that, yes, you are alive, just open your mouth and just thank God. Just thank Him for giving you another day and another month to live. Another month to live. He has seen you, brought you into another month. This is God doing His own thing. And um, it was not it's, it wasn't it was not your your effort it was about the divine blessing of God all right and God has been good to you so just thank him and um, just give him all the all the praise and, glo and, and, <clears throat> and glory that he deserves in the name of Jesus we thank you father we are grateful to you right now in the name of Jesus we are grateful to you thank you again in Jesus mighty name amen and amen Beloved, go with me. I've um, been talking about um, been talking about the today. I want to talk to you about the promise, one of the promise, the major promise that God. Hey, CEO, CEO, you are still alive and well. I know you are. Isn't that wonderful? Come on, give God all the praise. Amen. I'll be get, I'll be getting to you after the broadcast. All right, we need to talk. God bless you, my dear. God bless you. Please share this broadcast to your friends and loved ones. All right. Now, um, again, I want you to um, um, to uh, just thank God. But I want to, in this very short moment, I'm going to be talking to you about one of the the promises, the major promises that was given to man. Major promises by God, and uh, we need to um, we need to uh, understand this is the promise that is helping. Uh, when the promise has come, uh, it's going to help you in every area of your life. Okay? Now, that promise is the promise of the Holy Spirit. Have you heard his name before? The promise of the Holy Spirit. And um, the Holy Spirit was promised to you and I when Jesus has to have to depart from this earth. And um, he gave us a promise that uh, he will send the Holy Spirit. And when the Holy Spirit comes, he will lead us help us into all areas of our life. The Holy Spirit is a helper. All right, so uh, whichever area that you are facing some challenges, difficulties, you can help yourself and all that, I want you to know that the Holy Spirit 
is your helper. You need to, you need to first of all know him, and then allow him to help you, instead of trying to do things on your own that you can't. All right. In the in the couple um, uh, past months, we've been dealing about uh, the fact that we are not um, any longer living in that old dispensation or in old covenant and that we are in the new covenant the bible calls it the better covenant uh, the reason is we could man could not could not fulfill that old covenant with god man couldn't do it all right because it was all about the 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 effort that you put in and yet you keep failing how many times have you failed yourself and so it was about what you did all right for you know that gave god the right if you will based on the agreement all right so you do this and god does that uh in this dispensation in this new better covenant it's about what what jesus has already done for you that you need to come you need to just receive it believe it and receive it and live with it now there's a promise god bless you kumari god bless you there's a promise. There's a promise. Irama, God bless you too. There's a promise that, that Jesus gave after he has come to fulfill. Now, Jesus, let me remind you, all right, Petolo, God bless you for coming on there. there there's, there's something I want to remind you about, that because man could not uh, fulfill that old law, that old covenant, Jesus came to do that for you and I. All right, we see that. In John 3, 16, God, Bible says, For God so loved the world, He so loved the world. He loved, I mean, not just love, but He so loved it. That, because that's, that's, that's the world He created, and He didn't want to destroy it. So for God so loved the world, He sent, he, all right, His only beloved, begotten Son, that whosoever believe on what He has come to do will not perish but have everlasting life. Are you listening? And so Jesus came, and uh, we see that what he said in Matthew chapter 5, verse 17, that he did not come to abolish that old law. He came to fulfill it. For who? For man, not for himself. Jesus didn't have to come and do anything for himself to get approval of the Father. All right? He came to do this for man because God is, is divine. And when it comes to such agreement or, uh, you know, a covenant, Covenant is a very, very serious, you know, agreement. It's not one of those things you can easily break, all right, unless death, unless death. So when it comes to covenant, it is, it is, um, uh, it's not, it's not something that you can just break. And most of the time, God bless you, um, Joseph Dankwa, all right, and most of the time it takes, I mean, it, it's it, the relationship in between that has to do with blood, very serious, very, very serious, and so. And so for God, you know, for, for God to not to destroy man based on the fact that we couldn't obey that laws, we couldn't obey our side of the, of the, of the, uh, of the, um, of the contract, he has to find another way. And that's by sending his only begotten son, Jesus Christ. All right. The scripture says that whosoever believe on him will not perish, but have everlasting life. And so, therefore, what Jesus came to do, and he said in Matthew chapter 5, verse 17, if you go there, you see it, that he, Jesus, saying that I didn't come to destroy or do away with the old, old covenant, all right? I came to fulfill it. For who? For you and for me. Why? Because we couldn't do it. We could not obey it. It was so hard. That covenant was so hard for man to, to, to obey that covenant. It was very difficult for man because the, the, the deal is, it was such a covenant, it was such an agreement that if you broke one, you have broken all. Okay? Go If you go if you go to uh, Deuteronomy 8, um, 28, you will see, you know, part of it, I mean, you will see there. If you, if you, you have broken all. Now, who was able not, I mean, able to fulfill all the coven covenant, all the laws without breaking one? As a human being, beloved, the reason is, you are living on this earth with other people who have, who are not complete. 
they are not complete themselves are you listening to me they are not complete in the sense that human beings you know have faults with them when human beings have issues listen everybody have issues everybody have issues and um, and there's and part of the covenant was was to do not only with God but how you relate to other people and all that and if and for example I give you example like do not do not you know and those the covenant was more of do not do not do not all right do not covet your neighbor's goods now if you covet <laughs> if you covet you have sin and that one sin okay trying to trying to break that one sin that that one law but but you know fulfilling the nine just take the ten commandments as an example you have broken it all you have broken all are you listening by so doing you have broken all and by breaking all beloved it is not it is not something that would justify your right right standing with God are you listening to me and so Jesus has to come because he was fully man and fully God to do this he was divine complete 100% and so he says I didn't come in Matthew 5 17 I did not come to destroy the law but to fulfill it why because man couldn't do it human beings we could not fulfill that law so therefore Jesus has to come and do that for you and for me now by so doing um, by so doing he did all that needed to be done and the Bible said that he took away our sins and nailed them all on the cross of Calvary are you listening because when we had sinned, when we are sinned based on the fact that we had broken any of the law um, <clears throat> a blood has to be shed for the sacrifice or for the remission of our sins okay so now it is it is it is it was something that was the the priest has to do for the people on yearly basis once a year once a year so now we see that man could not obey man could not um oblige by the agreement that that was made with with god and so jesus came now jesus talking about the promise of the holy spirit one of the best promises god has given to man and that is what i want to talk to you about um today so you see that um jesus when he had come to fulfill all that he, he has to do for man by taking upon himself the things man couldn't do and he did all right took all our sins and nailed them to the cross scripture say, says says to you and i that then jesus okay jesus then gave us a promise as he has to finish his work and depart from the earth he gave us a promise and the promise is that i will send you the holy spirit i will send you the holy spirit he will he will help you and lead you into in all truth of your life i will send you the holy spirit that was a promise now jesus did that and the promise we see that holy spirit even th uh, in the day of pentecost for which uh, he was revealed are you listening now since then men have not walked with the holy spirit um the way we ought to walk with him why because uh, one maybe we don't know that the holy spirit he's here with us and he's at work with us as even in the days of um of paul that uh, that scripture says that some of the disciples did not even know about the holy spirit they didn't know about the holy spirit and so he paul um had a discussion with them as to you know finding out so in whose baptism were they baptized they said they were baptized um by john well john baptized you is true john baptized you um for repentance however you have to receive the baptism of the holy spirit because the holy spirit will lead you and guide you and strengthen you and empower you give you the authority all right for you to live because without the authority of the holy spirit beloved yes you have accepted jesus as your lord and savior um you will be falling short 
or not be um, having a complete fulfilled life. Are you listening? Why? Because, because the Holy Spirit is now in charge of this dispensation that you and I are living in. Are you listening? And so therefore, it is very important for you and I to understand that. So the promise of the Holy Spirit was given. Now we see the Holy Spirit also come. Jesus, I want, I want us to read something. Go with me to the book of John. Okay, let's see something in the book of John, the 14th chapter. <clears throat> Excuse me something. Excuse me. Um, John, the 14th chapter. Look at John, the 14th chapter. All right. Verse 16. Verse 16, Jesus is giving us this promise, the promise of the Holy Spirit. And I will pray the Father and he will give you another helper, the Bible says. All right? Jesus says, I will give you another helper that he may abide with you forever. The Holy Spirit will abide with you forever. Okay? The Holy Spirit will abide with you forever. The Holy Spirit will abide with you forever. So remember that when the Holy Spirit has come, he is, go, he is to be with us forever. Are you listening? Look at verse 17. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive. The Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive. Whom the world cannot receive. Neither does the world, because the world does not know him. Okay, they don't know him. But you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you the world does not know the holy spirit but you the child of god you know the holy spirit he dwells with you and he will be with you beloved this is a, this is such a a wonderful promise okay this is wonderful promise for for you as a child of god for you to know that the holy spirit is your helper so in any area of your life that you are not you can't help yourself whatever challenges that it may be beloved you need to rely on the holy spirit okay you need to rely because jesus has sent us the holy spirit he says i have to leave but i will send you the holy spirit it is so important that you understand this because without the holy spirit you cannot you can you i mean not to say that you can function but the capacity and, and the, 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 the fullness, okay, of your being cannot be, be you know, you, 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 can't, you can't come out. Give you example. Look at somebody like, like Peter. Okay? Look at somebody like Peter. I mean, sick people were brought to Peter before the Holy Spirit. But Peter, you know, couldn't you know couldn't um, heal them of course he's not a healer but he was he didn't have that that authority the holy spirit gives you the authority in every area of your life as a believer as a child of god are you listening to me the holy spirit gives you the authority and so you see that after the pentecost when the holy spirit has come upon the disciples now look at what peter was able to do peter now is able to stand there boldly. See, that's another thing. The Holy Spirit gives you boldness. The Holy Spirit gives you boldness. The Holy Spirit brings you to a place where you are not afraid. It doesn't matter whatever the situation is. It doesn't matter. Yeah, I was, I was, I was um, talking to my sister um, yesterday. Uh, some of you who know her, um, several blessings, and. Um, uh, she, I was I was sharing with her that um, she was playing um, a song about not being uh, any more slave to fear uh, before her program, and um, we were discussing some things, you know, some family things, and uh, and I told her that I'm not afraid anymore. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is now taking over. I used to be, and and the reason why I was is because I was ignorant about the authority of the holy spirit i was ignorant about the 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 um, the power i mean i i knew that the holy spirit you know has come but i i, I didn't receive him the way all right shannon 
God bless you. I didn't receive him the way, are you listening to me, that I was supposed to know him. And so now that I've come, you know, to, to receive him the way I'm supposed to, and he's, he's with me and in me, oh, fear is gone. It doesn't matter whatever it may be. Listen, it doesn't matter. You see, sometimes, and now I'm beginning to understand something. Sometimes we read about, about, um, about um, um, stories and, uh, and, and situations that happens to um, some people in the past, okay? Like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Beloved, can you imagine that you are so bold to tell, you know, the, the, the president for just using because the king was then the president saying that this image that is created any any time you hear the sound or the serene of what everybody should bow to this and this this young guy's bible says that they were so courageous and bold to tell the king that king we are not going to bow to you we are not bowing the reason why we are not bowing is because there's we are first of all we are not afraid of you are you getting the revelation here? Listen, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, beloved, you become like a you become so bold like a lion. I mean, lion. I mean, I, I'm lion is even afraid. I don't even want why I'm even using a lion. You know, beloved, some of you who don't know that lion is not the king of the of the jungle. Come on, lion is afraid of another animal. Maybe you don't know that. I'll tell you later. See me in private. <laughs> All right. So you see that you see that. This, this young guys were so bold to tell the king, king, listen, we don't care. We really don't care about whatever you say. You want to put us in the fire to burn us alive? Fine. But we will not bow. Why? Because they have that tenacity, okay, in them to know that. And listen to what they even said, that we know of a God. We have a God. He is in us and with us. And that he, he would deliver us from your hands. And even if he chooses not to deliver, oh my goodness. Now, for, for, for somebody to talk like that, you know that this person or that individual has the guts to talk like that. He says, they said, even if God, he chooses not to deliver us, we will still not bow to you. Why? Because whatever God chooses to do, it, it will be for our good. Now, when you come to that place, it's as a result of knowing, number one, what you have and who you have. Number one, what you have and who you are. You have. In other words, you know who you are. So when you have come to the place of knowing who you are in Christ, by the Holy Spirit. Beloved, you are no longer afraid. Mother, God bless you. You are no longer afraid. Fear, it should, listen, fear, it's not a, it's not a gift from God. Fear is not a gift from God. Some people are afraid. You know, I, I had um, Bishop um, Jakes, T.D. Jakes, um, 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 uh, the other day, that when, People walk away from your life. Let them go. Don't, don't be afraid. Beloved, listen, fear is not of God. Fear, God, listen to what the scripture says. Scripture says to you and me that God has not given you the spirit of fear. And if God has not given you the spirit of fear, then where is, where is the fear coming from? And why are you entertaining fear? Now, Fear comes as a result of your, your inability to understand the purpose of the Holy Spirit. Yes, your inability to understand the purpose of the Holy Spirit. And beloved, the Holy Spirit is not about you having some goosebumps on your body and, 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 and fall, you know, falling down and shaking and, and all that. All right, Tinis, God bless you. All right, the Holy Spirit... It's not about all that. Look at what Jesus says. He says, he will help you in every area of your life. Holy Spirit will help you. Beloved, one of the reasons why I believe Christians are struggling 
and I've been there. I'm telling you, it's our, because it's our inability to understand the purpose of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not only for you to experience some goosebumps and all that in church when you know the atmosphere is you know is is, is conducive for all this. No, listen, the Holy Spirit is with listen, look, listen to what Jesus says. He says, the Holy Spirit says, I will pray the Father, verse, verse 16 of uh, John uh, 14. I'll pray the Father and he will give you another helper. He will, he, that he may abide with you forever. Another helper. Helper in what? In only on Sundays? No. Not only on Sundays. Monday through Monday, the Holy Spirit is here to help you. I was sharing with um, 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 one of my mothers, uh, this my, my woman I consider my mother, a uh, very respected woman this morning. And I said, Mother, um, the Holy Spirit is not only to help us only on Sundays. The Holy Spirit, okay, is here to help us in every area of our lives. Every area. Every area. Don't wait, listen, beloved, don't wait for the Holy Spirit only on, or, or look for Him on Sundays. Whatever you are going through, even right now, trust the Holy Spirit to see you through. Talk to Him to see you through. This, I'm, this, is, what I'm, oh, this is what I do. Because I, listen, beloved, this, is, this, this was a promise. And this is the best promise I believe God has given to mankind. After we broke or we couldn't handle that old covenant, that old law. We couldn't. This is the best gift God has besides Jesus. Listen, I'm telling you something. This is the best gift God has ever given man. And that is the Holy Spirit. Now, remember... Jesus says, I have to leave. And when I leave, I will send the Holy Spirit to come. He, why did he have to leave? Because he came to fulfill, to do for you and me what we were not able to do. He came to do it. We were, we were just sinning too much. We were just breaking the laws too much. And there was no way we could ever come to that place of fulfilling it. And so he came to do that for us. Now, when he, he finishes work, and you heard what he said on the cross, it is finished. What is finished? The work that God you sent me to do, remember he was the only begotten son. Now, whosoever believe on him will not perish but have everlasting life. Whosoever believe on him, on what? On the finished work that he did concerning you for that matter. Jesus didn't die for himself. Why did he have to shed his blood? No, because the shedding of the blood was, was, was the instrument that man needed, okay, to, for the cleansing of their sins. The shedding of the blood was, well, the blood was what man needed. Barbara, God bless you. That is what man needed, okay, to make up where God is, was concerned. So, so it tells you how serious the covenant was. Now, scripture tells you, and now we're going to see this, that Jesus then have, you know, when he came, he has to shed his blood once and that's it. That's it for you and I. But if you only, if you believe, if you believe it, that is where the issue is. So now, we see that Jesus came, he did all that. Now, he gave us the promise. I'm back to talking about the promise of the Holy Spirit. He gave us the promise that he has to then, since he has finished his work on earth, go back to the Father. And now scripture tells you and I that he seated at the right, right hand of God and still even making intercession for you and I. Are you listening to me? So now, he sent the Holy Spirit. And we see the evidence of that through the, you know, in Jerusalem in the day of Pentecost and on and on and on and on. 
and he's, he's here with us forever, which I just saw, read that you know, to you in verse 16. He says that he may abide with you forever. The Holy Spirit will abide with you forever. Are you listening? So if the Holy Spirit is abiding with us forever, then now and until then, the Holy Spirit is here. But I want to bring you to that understanding that he is your helper. In every area that you can help yourself. In every area. In every area. Beloved, I have come to realize that I need to rely on the Holy Spirit more. The areas in which I can help. Because, beloved, if you could help yourself in that, in that situation you're going through, you could have, you will have done that you will have done that long time ago if you could help yourself rely on the holy spirit the reason why i believe you're not doing that because you know you don't trust him and it's serious very serious not to trust the holy spirit very very serious and another reason why fear comes you afraid is because you don't know that the holy spirit is here to help you you don't know that so I want you to know that the Holy Spirit is here to help you in every area of your life. Now, just name it. I don't know what you're going through. It could be some financial areas, which is a common denominator for all men. <laughs> or it could be some family issues. It could be, you know, work-related. It could be relationship-related. It could be whatever. Beloved, let the whole rely on the Holy Spirit. Now you say, Pastor, but I, 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 I don't know the Holy Spirit. I, I you know, you, you know. Well, I'm, I, I'm going to lead you to the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I'm going to pray with you right now, right now, right now. Just close your eyes with me right now, and I want you to just, just open your heart. Somebody says, How do I open my heart? Just. Just see yourself that you've come into a, a room, there's no light, you switch on the light, then the light comes. That's, it's as simple as that. And pray that prayer with me. Say, Holy Spirit, baptize me. Just say that. Holy Spirit, baptize me. Holy Spirit, baptize me. That's it. Yeah, it's as simple as that. Mm-hmm. And if you sincerely believe that, just watch. I, I was sharing with, with mother this morning. I said, mother, do you know the Holy Spirit doesn't force him? He's not a rapist. He doesn't force himself on anybody. He doesn't force himself on anybody. If you invite him into your life, he will come. He will come. So as you have invited him to baptize you, you know, Paul asked the disciples, he says, have you been baptized? They say yes, with the baptism of, of, uh, of John. Yes, but he says, John said that believe on the one who is coming after me. Okay? Now, we saw the baptism, I mean, the Holy Spirit even descending upon Jesus. The other day, I shared that the other day, that the Holy Spirit have to even descend on Jesus. When John was baptizing Jesus, we see that the Holy Spirit came in the form of a dove. And a voice of God came down from heaven that, Behold, this is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. The Holy Spirit came upon even Jesus. Now, it was after that Jesus went about the ministry. The promises of the Holy Spirit, beloved. And so, I want you to know that don't ignore. This is, this is the tool that the devil doesn't want you to know. This is your, your, your inheritance that the devil doesn't want you to know. That the Holy Spirit is here to help you out in every area of your life. Are you listening to me? Let's read some scriptures, okay? Go with me to um, uh, look at um, John, John the 15. Uh, are we in John now? Yeah, okay. Let's, let's look at something very important here. Let's look at something important. John the 15th chapter go with me to the 15th chapter all right 15th chapter look at verse 26 okay but when the helper comes what's what jesus is saying that 
when the helper comes, whom I shall send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth, who proceeds from the Father, he will testify of me. So in other words, the Holy Spirit, if you don't know that Jesus, if, in other words, if you don't believe the finished work of Jesus, the Holy Spirit will help you to believe that. Listen to what Jesus is saying. First of all, first of all, listen to Jesus here in chapter 14. Okay, verse, verse 16 of John. I will pray the Father and he will give you another helper that he may abide with you forever. Verse 17, even the, whole, the spirit of truth. The Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth. Bible says that when he comes, he will lead you into all truth. The spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it, the world neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him. For he dwells with you and will be in you. Okay? So now, this is the promise Jesus gave. Now look at verse 26 of, um, of um, chapter 15. Verse 26. But when the helper comes, whom I shall send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth. You see, that's, 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 that's who he is again. The Spirit of truth. Okay? Who proceeds from the Father, he will testify of me. He will testify of me. So, beloved, if you, want, if you don't engage the Holy Spirit, you may be hearing false teachings about Jesus. Do you know there are some people going around saying that, you know, the, this uh, Jesus walking on the face of the earth and all that, it was, it's a myth. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. There's, a, there's this guy who says, um, says that he, he's an ex-Catholic priest. <laughs> Catholic priest. <laughs> all right? Ex. Ex-Catholic priest. And he's teaching that this is it was, it's a myth. Jesus, there's nothing like Jesus coming on the face of this earth, walking on the face of this earth, and doing all the other things he did. Oh, yeah. And so, beloved, if you don't engage the Holy Spirit, you will hear certain things. Listen. So interesting. Another, another ex Catholic priest, when I was in college at Temple University, one of my elective uh, um, uh, lectures, the lecturer, he was an, also an ex you know, and um, the, we, were, we were studying the book of Job. Beloved, if you don't have that Holy Spirit in you, you'll be so convinced. You know, you know, there are some people who can really convince you. They can change your mind if you are not rooted and grounded in the word I'm telling you and so you have to be very 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 careful even with who you engage in com conversation who is not of the faith very very careful some are going around saying that the 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 this this all this whole thing about Jesus walking on the face of the earth and all that it was nothing but a myth somebody created that and, and all that. And if you are not, I'm telling you, if you, if you don't have the Holy Spirit with you, you, you there, there's the possibility of you buying into that. It's very, very thin. Very, very thin. Are you listening? Now, let's get back to our word. So be very careful. <clears throat> Verse 26 of chapter 15. But when the helper comes, whom I shall send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth, who proceeds from the Father, who proceeds or came from the Father or come from the Father, he will testify of me. All right? And you also will bear witness because you have been with me from the beginning. Jesus was speaking now. Now, look at chapter 16 of John. Look at chapter 16 of John. Let's look at something here from verse 7. <clears throat> All right? Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. Jesus is still speaking to you and I. Nevertheless, as I tell you the truth. It is, to, it is to your advantage that I go away. 
it is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. So this is the promise. It is, your, it is to your advantage. Beloved, you see why I'm saying that you need the Holy Spirit than anything else. Don't engage, don't look for the Holy Spirit only on Sundays when you go to church. Beloved, in every aspect of your life, you need the Holy Spirit. Are you listening? He says that it is to your advantage, Jesus is speaking here, that I go away. It is to your advantage so that the Holy Spirit will come Look at that. The, the helper will come to you. But if I, if I depart, I will send him to you. Verse 8. And when he has come, he will convict the world of sin. When he has come, convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. What's these three things here? Okay. Sin, righteousness, and judgment. Sin, righteousness, and judgment. Verse 9. Verse 9. Of sin, number one, because they do not believe in me. Of sin. Beloved, I, I, I said it the other day that God will not judge you because of your sin. God will judge you because of your belief in Jesus Christ. Let me say that again. God will not judge you because of your sin. Jesus has done away with the sins. But it is for you to believe, buy into it. Let me use that business word, buy into it. And so you see what Jesus is saying. Number one, number one of sin, verse nine, because they do not believe in me. So, your sinfulness is as a result of your belief in Jesus. It's no longer, because if the guy has bought your sins, okay, and now you are free, why are you then not receiving what he has done for you? You want to make him a fool? Okay. Verse 10. Number two, of righteousness. Because I go to my father and you see me no more. So therefore, your righteousness is through he, Jesus, now. It's no longer in the old covenant of how you have to do everything right, struggling to, to obey the laws. And you keep breaking it. You keep breaking it. I mean, you go up today, you come back tomorrow. You go up today, you come back tomorrow. You go, it's like, it, you know, I, I see, I see, I see that that old law was like, like seeing yourself on a treadmill. You know what a treadmill is? That machine that you, you, you know, you stand on it and you are either running or walking like you are moving forward, but yet you are standing in the same place. That's what it is. Are you listening? That's what it is. Of righteousness because because I go to my father and you see me no more you see me no more and of judgment because the ruler of this world is judged the ruler of this world is judged now second Corinthians chapter 4 verse 4 talks about who the ruler of this world is or the one who's been given the mandate to operate. Jesus acknowledged him as the prince of the air. That devil, that Satan, that you know, that you are afraid of and, and you talk about and you, you talk more about him than even Jesus. Most of the time you spend so much time praying against the devil. The devil this, the devil this, the devil this, the devil this, the devil this. And meanwhile, somebody has done your job for you. And look at what it is. Okay, verse. He's already judged. All right? Judgment because the ruler of this world is judged. He's already judged. He knows it. You may not know. 
And that is why he is taking advantage of your ignorance and applying these forces over your life. Listen, it doesn't matter. It doesn't, you don't have to. You Listen, beloved, you don't have to have everything. The enemy will, will, will put pressure. Yes, but you don't have to have everything. Listen, the three Hebrew young guys, don't you think that pressure was on them? To bow? Pressure was on them to bow. But they stuck to their grounds and says, it don't matter. It does not matter whatever comes to me. It don't matter. Job says that I know my Redeemer live it. It doesn't matter what I'm going through. I know my Redeemer live it. Beloved, stick to it. Because you see, when you stick to it, I've come to realize it. You stick to it. He will, he will come with pressure, pressure, pressure pressure but after a while he will leave you because it's like man the guy's made up his mind i can't sway him that's what it is pressure i can't i can't sway him anymore you got to have this stubborn faith in god are you listening you got to have the stubborn faith all these things that and and the, i mean he will come listen the devil will use people to bring fear to you he will use people he will use people, people, whether in pop in the pulpit or anywhere else, to put fear in you because of what you may be going through. Because of what you listen to the English, what you are going through, not here, not not staying. Jesus says that rejoice because I have already overcome. I've done it already. In this world, he says there will be there will be pressures and 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 all kinds of uh, um, um, tribulations and all that. He says, rejoice because I have already overcome them. So they are just a temporal situation. Are you listening to me? And rely on the Holy Spirit. Rely on the Holy Spirit. Verse. So just just for you to know, verse twelve. I still have many things to say to you, but because you cannot bear them now, Jesus is speaking. However, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he, he hears, he will speak and he will tell you things even to come. Did you hear that? He will tell you the things that have not even come yet, but will come. Are you listening? See, if you go to the book of Corinthians, first Corinthians, I believe the scripture talks about the fact that um, eyes have not seen or ears heard, has not entered into the heart of any man, but God has prepared all the good things for those who love him and all that. And then if you continue from you know, down, I believe it's verse 10. He says that the spirit, the spirit knows the things of God, even the deep things of God. And he has, he, things have been revealed to us by the spirit, by the spirit. Are you listening? And listen to what Jesus is saying. He says that he will, he says verse 13 again. However, the, he, he, first of all, is a he. All right. <laughs> The spirit of truth, when he has come, he will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak of his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will tell you things to come. He will tell you even things to come. In other words, he will give you a foreknowledge of what is about to happen. He will give you... See, you know, yesterday, man, I was, I was just... Just, I mean, my, my, I was feeling some easiness in my spirit. Just, you know, throughout the, you know, better part of the morning. And it's like, man, what's going on here? You know, you know what happening? My spirit picked up something that was going on in the realms of the spirit. Why? Because the Holy Spirit that is in me was a, was, I mean, so he, he lifted my tentacles. He lifted my antennas. <laughs> like somebody said tentacles. He lifted my antennas. He like, hey, there's something going on. And so I switched gears. 
into, into the realms of the spirit to, to come back to whatever it was. Are you listening to me? He will lead you. He says that, watch this, that the spirit, he will not speak of his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will tell you things to come. Verse 14. He will, watch this now, watch this now, the spirit of God, when he comes, watch this now, the Holy Spirit, verse 14. He will glorify me, Jesus said, for he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. He will take what is mine and declare it to you. That's what Jesus is saying. When the Spirit has is come, the Holy Spirit, he will take that which is, which is of Jesus and declare it to you. What is of Jesus? What is of Jesus is the finished work of Jesus concerning your life. For you to, beloved, know that you are no longer a sinner. Are you listening to me? Which... Out as a result of your sin, Satan has taken over because you know that I mean that is that is the the, the that is his area. He takes the sins, okay, and and work with it. He takes the sin, but you are not if you have accepted Jesus and the work he did for you on himself, beloved, you are no longer. A slave to sin. You are no longer. And now you need to allow the Holy Spirit. You see what the Holy Spirit the, the promises of the Holy Spirit and what he when what what his his assignment is, he will lead you into all these areas. The Holy Spirit will help you, beloved. I'm telling you. You need to rely on him. All right, verse 15. All things that the Father has are mine. Jesus says, all things that the Father has are mine. Therefore, I said, to, I said to you, I said to you, he will take off mine and declare to you. He's, Jesus is repeating himself. He will take what is of Jesus and declare it to you. Now, how would you know? Because see, Jesus is still sitting at the right side of God, right hand, making intercession for you and I. He's still making intercession for you and I. So what is the Holy Spirit going to say? First of all, you need to know him so that he, when he speaks, you can hear. Are you listening? Very, very, very important. Okay, go, let's see some scriptures, all right? Let's see some scriptures. Um, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. I don't, wanna, I don't want you to think that I'm just making up some stuff to you, all right? All right, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Talking about the bed, you know, the Holy Spirit, the promise of the Holy Spirit. Okay? Look at it. So that when the Holy Spirit comes, okay, he will listen, he will help you in every area of your life. Therefore, whatever you are going through now, okay? Therefore, whatever you are going through now, don't think that it's as a result of some sins you have committed. Like that's what somebody, somebody, somebody will let the devil would use some people to let you believe that, and let you think that oh you you under a bondage, you under a curse, you under a cage, you are in a cage, and all that. Listen, God, let, if God be for, have you heard this words before? If God be for you, who can be against you? Have you have you heard that before? If God be for you, now. God never said, we're not going to go through anything. Listen to what Jesus says. He says, in this life, in this life that you live in, there are, there are many tribulations and many troubles. Many troubles. But take heart, because I have overcome. God bless you, man of, uh, man of God, Ezekiel. All right? He says, take heart, because I have overcome. Going through challenges does not mean that the sins you committed 100 years ago has come back to roost. And therefore, some demons in your families and all that. Is, I used to believe that nonsense. I, it is nonsense if you are in Christ. If you are in Christ. Where it, what, 
Are you telling me? See, this is what gets me angry and annoyed. Are you telling me that this so-called demons that you're talking about, that uh, they, they, they are more powerful than your Christ, your God? Is that what you're telling me? Just because of what you are going through right now? Now go and ask Job. Did Job ever, ever recognize Satan? Even though Job, listen, the Bible said Job was a spiritual man. Job was not just a common man. Job had a spiritual understanding of what was going on. He knew that that is why Job was, was irrespective of everything. His focus was more on even God. As to God, why are you doing this to me? God, why, you know, or God. But Job knew that what was happening here, it wasn't just God, just God. God has allowed Satan to do that. God has allowed Satan to do that. And so listen to, listen to some, of the, 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 some of the things he says. He says, even, even if he slay me, I know my Redeemer liveth. My Redeemer liveth. Now, how is he, is he fighting or, or, or condemning the person and at the same time trusting in him? No. Look at chapter, uh, chapter um, 5. Look at chapter 5 of, um, of 2 Corinthians. Chapter 5, verse 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ... He is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. If you are in Christ. Unless you are not in Christ. Unless you are not in Christ. But if you are in Christ, then you are a new creation. All things have passed away. So what is this so-called satanic, demonic demons you, from your family background, and they are the ones haunting you, and this one is... The, even, if, even if they are doing it, please let them do. You are in Christ. You are in Christ. Do, do I care what... Watch this. Do you think I care of what another nation is doing to themselves if I, I belong to this nation? No, I don't care. I am, in, I am in Christ. Whatever Satan wants to do with whatever, that's his business. I am in Christ. My focus is here. See, I, I told you earlier, the three Hebrew young guys, they were focused. They were so focused on God that gave them that, that boldness to tell the king, we don't give a hoot of whatever you think you want to do to us. Go ahead. Go ahead. Even if our God that we're talking about decides that he's not going to help us, we will still not bow to you. Are you listening to me? Beloved, you need to come have this understanding and live a life of boldness and courage. If not, I'm telling you, the devil will present fear to you and that's what he wants you to bite. He wants to, he will present fear. And you know, maybe you know, maybe you don't know, but let me just give it to you as a refresher course. Fear kills. Fear kills. Fear will kill every good and perfect ability God has put in you. Fear will kill it. And that is the work of the devil. That is what, listen, look at what John says in John chapter 10 verse 10. He says, he came, the devil, he came to steal, to kill, and to destroy. He came to steal. He didn't come to, to, to suggest anything to you. He, this is his, his assignment. Fear kills. Fear will destroy every good and perfect ability God has put in you. And you will not live to the max of your, of your, of your, of your life, of your potential. Why? Because you are living in fear. Fear, fear will bring, I'm telling you something, fear will, will cripple you. Fear will give, fear will, 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 will put arthritis. You know, that craziness stuff where all your bones 
feel so tight and, and hurt and, and all that. I call it spiritual arthritis. I'm telling you. Fear will destroy you completely. Fear will destroy you. I have come to realize that there are people who are, are, are destroyed as a result of fear. People say that, oh, um, Job went through what he went through because he says what he was afraid has come upon him. No, no, no. That is not, that is not in that context what Job was talking about. Well, Job was concerned that something like this doesn't happen. But that, it didn't mean that he, because of fear, he, you know, he, he, he went into that atmosphere. No. No. Bible says that he was even making sacrifices to God for his children, just even in case they, they sin against God. He was a spiritual man and understood spiritual things. Are you listening to me? And so, beloved, I want you to understand this. Fear will kill you. Now, this is what this, this is what devil Satan presents to you. Fear. And so, if you are in Christ, if you are in Christ, look at this. You are a new creation. You are a new creation. All things have passed away. Bible says, behold, everything, all things, not some, all things have become new. All, underline the word all, underline that sentence, all, all things, not some things. Beloved, I think this is where most of us, we missed it. We think that because of whatever we is going, is happening in our life now, you know, well, God is, is punishing me or uh, some you know some demon is is attacking me and and this and and I've come now now how do you be in Christ be a new creation and still be under the governing authority of the devil how is that just let's use common sense don't try to be spiritual don't spiritualize this how is that how is that? You are in Christ. So I, I want to draw your mind to the fact that whatever you are going through right now has nothing to do with your old past or your old self or whatever, you know. Listen, I just read that to you that the, 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 that, that um, the ruler of this world now, he's already judged. He's already judged. He knows where he spent. he's going to be spending his eternity. The Bible said that he will be put in prison for a thousand years. He's already just, I think the devil is more think, is thinking more about himself of where he's going to be spending eternity than you worrying yourself about he putting, he, he trying to uh, destroy anything about you. I think it's more, because, be, uh, think about that. Just think about it. Just think about it. Why don't you stay focused? Just stay focused in being in Christ. And let him worry about it, about whatever he wants to worry himself. Now listen to what Jesus says. Scripture says that he, he the devil, comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But listen to Jesus. He says, I, but I have come to give you life. And life more abundant. Why are you not receiving the life? But you are... See, most of the time, that's all that we quote that scripture and we leave it there. No. Don't quote that scripture and leave it there. You, you've heard of what Satan's responsibility on assignment is. Listen to the responsibility and assignment of Jesus too. Because in this world, you either choose it. I was telling mother this morning, you have, you have a choice. Choose on which side you want to be. Don't just quote that scripture and leave it there. He, he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. That's his assignment. Yes, we know that. But don't stop right there. Somebody else is also down there. Jesus says, but I have come. Glory be to God. I have come that you, not he, you, you. I'm talking to you now. Say me. If you are watching me right now, wherever, say me. I have come that you may have life. And have it more abundant. Glory be to God. You may have life. Come on, shout life. 
That is why I, I asked you this morning before before we started the program, just pinch yourself and, and see that you are you are among the among the living. Just see yourself, pinch yourself, make sure you are among the living. You have life. Did you buy this life right now? You tell me how many of you watching me bought your life to be alive this morning? How many? Jesus says, I came to give you life and life more abundant. Abundant life. Why are you not spending your time and energy looking to the promises, the abundant life? That's, that's another promise. Look at, look at the promises. I have come that you may have life and have it more abundant. So if God is, if Jesus is giving us more abundant life, why are you taking your eyes off the abundant life in worrying about Satan and his demons that are already judged? They are already judged. They are already judged. Why are you worrying yourself about that? Because of what you are going through. Oh, beloved, God has not finished with you. God has not finished with us. Are you listening to me? The enemy uses this. Okay? He uses this situation just to scare you. Just to scare you that, well, no, you are going to because of, of this and not. No, 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 no. Jesus has already done it. Are you listening? Therefore, if anyone be in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Verse 18, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, now verse 18. Now all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. All things. Jesus, God has reconciled us back. God has brought us back to the table through Jesus. Why? Because in that old covenant, we couldn't, we, 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 we couldn't fulfill our part of the game, or, or, of, 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 uh, of the deal. So Jesus came to do it for us. And so now, listen to this. Now, all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their sins or their trespasses to them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ as though God were pleading through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. Now, how do you tell me, an ambassador of God, that I am under Satan's spell? How do you tell me that? And you want to come and frighten me with some stupidness? And you want me to believe that nonsense? No, you believe it for yourself. I believe that I am in Christ. I believe that I am in Christ. And I am a new creation. All oh, glory be to God. All things have passed away. All things have passed away. How do you be in Christ and still be under the oppression of Satan. How is that possible? You tell me. How is that possible? You, you divided yourself into two parts? Watch this now. For he made him who knew no sin. Okay? God made him who knew no sin. To be sin for us. That we might become the righteousness of God in Christ. Just so that you don't know. 
Okay, just so that you don't know and you are condemning yourself because you think that the sins you have committed 100 years ago is as a result of what you are going through. Hey, beloved, be believe the truth. See, when the Holy Spirit has come, you remember what Jesus says? He will lead you into all truth. This is the truth of the matter. This is the truth of the matter. Jesus didn't have to become a sinner. He was not. He, he wasn't a sinner. But watch this. For he was made as he, for him who knew no sin, knew no sin, became a sin for us, or a sinner for us, that we, watch this, that, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. How am I a righteous person and yet telling me that I am under, I'm in a cage of Satan and that kind of nonsense? How, how is that? And yet the righteous God is sitting down there watching his righteousness in a, in a, in a cage of Satan. I mean, does that make any sense? Well, you tell me. Don't beat yourself up, beloved. Don't beat yourself up. Don't, don't buy this lies of the devil and think that what you have done, what you are going through now, see, most of the time, we, you know, whatever we are going through is what people want to judge you about. And if you don't know who you are in Christ, you buy into whatever they are judging you and you go along with it. That's what, that's what we do. We buy into what we don't know. But let me tell you something. If the whole world gathered today and said you are going to die, you are the only person who can refuse your death. I have come to the place I don't give a hoot, damn nothing about whatever you say about me. Nothing. It don't matter. As my, make me more popular by even talking about me. Make me more popular. Because I know who I am in Christ. I know it's about what God has said. It's not about what you're saying. Who are you listening to? Beloved, the promise of the Holy Spirit has been fulfilled. The promise of the Holy Spirit has been fulfilled. It's up to you now to receive the Holy Spirit and let him be part of your life or just live your, your life as is as in the old covenant and and in ignorance and allow this so-called demons and all that to be tormenting you and going through all these challenges of life are you listening it's up to you it's a choice you have the choice you have the choice whose side are you on the side of god or on the side of some demons or Satan, whose side are you? Today, Bible says, if you hear his voice, how can not your heart? Today is the day of your salvation. So if you have not given your life to Jesus, this is the opportunity for you to do that. And if you have given your life to Jesus, then I also want you to know that you are no longer under the, the control of, of Satan and his demons. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creation, a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. So if you don't know Jesus, you must receive him. You must re you see, you see what we just read? The sin because you don't believe in him. Eh? Hmm. Judgment because the prince of the air has already been judged. <laughs> oh, God. And you think I want to worry myself about what he is doing or what he wants to do? I am in Christ. Beloved, stay in Christ. Who do you want to protect you? Christ? Or you, you think that... Um, The, the, the fear tricks of the devil 
is going to destroy. If you buy into that, whichever way you buy into, scripture says whoever, whoever you confess, be, you become a slave to that person. Whoever you confess, whoever you accept. It don't matter whatever he tries to do. Though he slay me, oh, though he slay me, yet, though he slay me, yet, yet, it doesn't matter. It does not matter. I am, I, I am in for life. And so please get it in your faculty. I am in for life. It don't matter anymore. It doesn't matter. And this is where the three Hebrews were, Hebrews were saying to the king. It doesn't matter. And you realize that they did not even